Fatima, her hands were ripped apart. This is the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad. Her hands became harsh, became coarse, became rough, because she would knead the dough, wash the clothing, take care of the home. So she said one day to Ali, go and speak to the Prophet We've just received the booty, some servants have come, go and ask him to send a servant into our house. Ali comes and he expresses his concern. The Prophet Muhammad listens to him. In the evening, he comes to visit both of them. He comes and he sits so close to them. They feel the body heat of the Prophet Muhammad They want to sit up. Out of respect, he tells them to stay there. He says, don't think I am unaware of what you requested. He could have given it to them, as many servants as they wanted. He said to them, it's better for you every night to say subhanallah 33 times. Alhamdulillah 33 times. Allahu Akbar 34 times. That's enough. You don't need these elements of the dunya. And he says, I never gave that up in my life. Never. When I fought, when I struggled, turmoils, calamities, difficulties, I went to sleep saying Subhanallah 33 times. Alhamdulillah 33 times. Allahu Akbar 34 times. Indeed, in the dhikr of Allah, do hearts find tranquility and find peace. كان النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام يحبها حبا عظيما لدرجة أنها إذا أقبلت عليه قام صلى الله عليه وسلم إليها وقبل جبينها وأقعدها مكانه من شدة تقديره لها وكان عليه الصلاة والسلام أيضا إذا جاء من سفر بدأ بالمسجد فصلى فيه ركعتين ثم جاء إلى بيتها وسلم عليها ثم مضى إلى بيوت نساء هي, سي... هي سيدة نساء أهل الجنة كما ذكرنا وهي أيضا قد ولدت سيدي شباب أهل الجنة ولدت الحسن والحسين هي فاطمة بنت رسول الله عليه الصلاة والسلام. You know, one day in the early days of Islam, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was praying in front of the Kaaba, and Abu Jahl, Uqba bin Abi Mu'ayt, and Shayba, Abu Jahl made the suggestion. He said, you know, who would actually go and take the filth, the guts of a camel, and all of its filth, and dump it on his back while he's praying to humiliate him? And Abu Jahl is someone who has stepped on the neck of the Prophet ﷺ while he was praying. He's someone who used to throw dirt on the Prophet ﷺ, but he wanted to degrade him even further. And Uqba bin Abi Mu'it volunteered himself, and he went and he grabbed all of the filth of a camel, its guts and everything, all of its najasa, and he dumped it on the back of the Prophet ﷺ in his sujood, and that weighed the Prophet ﷺ's back heavily. And imagine this young girl, not even a teenager yet, Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, the daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa seeing her father in this state, seeing the people laugh at him and mock him and curse him. And she comes and she starts to scrape all of that filth off of the back of her father. Imagine the humiliation and the hurt and the pain. And she sees that and she starts to cry radiallahu ta'ala anha. And the Prophet says, do not cry, O oh my daughter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help your father. He will give victory to your father. This was a woman who believed in her father. She understood that the road that we're traversing is a difficult one and it's a perilous one. And it's one full of trials and difficulties. And she pursued that path together with her mother Khadija and her father Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another time is that she was with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in times when no one else was with him. In fact, when Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha passed away, it was only the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha alone in that household. And subhanAllah, you can imagine what role she had to play. She was only five years old when Rasulullah sallallahu received revelation. So she was born 
She actually grew up in Islam. So imagine the times the Prophet ﷺ would come home when he was feeling devastated after losing Khadija radiallahu anha and Abu Talib and having no one else. And she was the one that would cook for him. She was the one that would come to his aid. She was the one that started to comfort him, that took her mother's place. And in fact, they used to call Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha the mother of her father. She cared for the Prophet ﷺ that much. During the life of the Muslims in Medina, Fatima by now was growing up السلام, and she, she is proposed to for marriage. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had intended for Fatima Ali radiallahu an. They knew about each other and they knew about the greatness of one another. And Ali radiallahu an was someone who was beloved to Allah and beloved to his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Ali in from the hadith from our sources we have the Prophet of Allah says no one loves you except he's a believer and no one hates you except that he's a hypocrite. From there great children were, was Hassan radiallahu an and Hussein and Muhassan and Zainab and Umm Kulthum and Ruqayya. These were the children of Ali and Fatima. Once the Prophet of Allah was wearing a cloak and Inside that cloak came Ali radiallahu an, and also came Hassan his son, and Hussein his other son, and then Fatima his daughter, and then the Prophet of Allah closed it like this. And then he recited this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to remove impurities from you, O Ahl al-Bayt, and give you a, a complete purification. She also adopted so much from the Prophet ﷺ in terms of her character. In fact, one of her nicknames being Az-Zahra, the Splendid One, was because of her radiant face. She had that beautiful radiant face. And she is the daughter of Rasulullah ﷺ, whose face was as bright as the full moon. And SubhanAllah, we find Aisha says something very special about her. She says, I have never seen anyone who resembled the Prophet ﷺ from Allah's creation more in speech and in character and conversation than Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. And listen to what she says. She says that anytime she entered upon a room where the Prophet sallallahu was, she said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam would get up. He would greet her. He would kiss her. He would hold her hand. And then he would take Fatima and sit her down in the same place that he was sitting alayhi salatu wasalam, Honoring her and holding her in that high esteem. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that Fatima, she is the queen. She is the leader of the women of paradise. Not only has she perfected her faith, she is the leader of the people of paradise. We also know in the famous hadith that Fatima was a part of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam then who could be comparable to a part of the Prophet ﷺ? He, whoever angers her, angers me. Whoever pleases her, pleases me. So we know therefore that Fatima is so specific that her happiness and her anger was linked to the anger and the happiness of the Prophet of Allah himself ﷺ. Aisha again narrated and says radiallahu anha, I have not seen anybody who resembles the Prophet of Allah in her standing and in her sitting more than Fatima, the daughter of Rasulullah I have not seen anybody more honest in speech than Fatima, the daughter of Rasulullah known for her honesty, she was known for her bravery, she was known for her piety she was known for her sacrifice, she was known for her resemblance and imitation of the Prophet she was young when the Prophet of Allah came towards the end of his life Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam That was a very difficult moment for Fatima and, and others There was an incident and again this is coming from Aisha radiallahu anha where she said that she noticed Fatima with the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu when the Prophet of Allah was very very sick and she saw the Prophet of Allah whisper something to her. Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, she sees the Prophet sallallahu in his in his battered state, in his clothes and, and his illness, and she, she starts to cry. And Rasulullah sallallahu calls her over compassionately. And the Prophet sallallahu says, come, let me tell you something. And Rasulullah sallallahu whispers something to her. And she starts to cry further. 
And Rasulullah Sallallahu says, come back down. Let me tell you something else, come back. And he whispers to her again, and she starts to laugh. And the people were amazed. Aisha Radiallahu Ta'ala Anha demanded, she said, tell me what it was that the Prophet Sallallahu told you. And at first she refused, but eventually she gave in and she told Aisha Radiallahu Anha, she said that my father told me the first time, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he would not survive this illness. And then he called me back and he told me, you will be the first one to join me. She laughed at death. The Prophet of Allah says, none of you is given a, a test or a trial difficulty more than mine. And what that means is his death. Then he says, because that's the greatest of trials, the greatest of difficulties is the death of the Prophet of Allah wasallam. Because the effect that that had on that initial great community was uh, something that no one had seen before. They were dependent and they relied. That was their prophet, that was their leader, that was their beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Just imagine how it must have felt then for Fatima. And we know for example during the illness of her father, when the Prophet was very ill and he was dying, Fatima exclaimed, this is Wa Karba, oh what grief there is. And the Prophet says to Fatima, your father will have no grief after today. I mean, indicating to her that he would pass away as Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Fatima was so grief-stricken. The Prophet of Allah says to her, Does it not please you that you are the leader of all the believers? And that you know, gave some joy to, to Fatima. When he had died, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she cried out and says, Ya Abata, O oh Father, your Lord called you and you responded. That's from heaven, from Janatul Firdaus. She was uh, so affected that she would prefer to remain recluse in her own home. She once says to Sahaba, after they buried the Prophet of Allah, she says to Anas, Ya Anas, how did you pluck up the spirit that you would throw dust on the body of the Prophet ﷺ. She says that a difficulty has come upon me. If that difficulty came upon the day, it would turn the day into the night. Meaning that's how grief-stricken she was following the passing of the Prophet ﷺ. Four to six months afterwards, Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha becomes ill and actually she was ill from the time of the death of the Prophet out of her out of her pain from her father dying. And this is a mother of young children. This is a mother who's married to a wonderful husband. But subhanAllah, she just wants to be with her father sallallahu alayhi wa in Jannah al-Firdaus. And so she goes one day and, and she smiles looking to the heavens. And she calls for Asma bint Abi Umais, the wife of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anha wa an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them both. And Asma was going to be the one to wash the body of Fatima. And look at how this royal woman speaks. She says to Asma, she says that whenever you do my ghusl, and whenever you do my janazah, do it at night so that the people will not see my figure. SubhanAllah, this was a, a woman who was full of modesty. She was known for her modesty. She's the, the daughter of the most modest, the most bashful sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. SubhanAllah. And that is how she was buried at night. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala joined her with her father sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she took her rightful position as the queen, the leader of the women of paradise. Now in conclusion, I think it's important for us to mention two things because there are two things that are points of controversy. One is the incident when the Prophet of Allah had passed away sallam, and Fatima comes along to Abu Bakr, the Khalifa radiallahu anhu and she asked for the land of Fadak. Abu Bakr, he says to her that, you know, I can't give you that land because of what I heard from the Prophet of Allah. You know, we do not leave behind inheritance. That our land, our wealth all goes for sadaqah. We don't leave behind inheritance. That Fatima became upset with Abu Bakr and then Fatima didn't speak to him until she died. So there are some people who like to latch on to this narration and say, see, Fatima was angry 
And that means from the other hadith, whoever angers Fatima angers me. The Prophet says, whoever pleases Fatima pleases me. There are other narrations that we fail to consider. After this incident, he went to the house of Fatima and Ali. And he knocks on the door and Ali uh, says to Fatima, this is Abu Bakr on the door. And if you give permission, I will allow him to enter. So Abu Bakr enters the house and he speaks with her. And then in the end of the narration, we have that she was pleased with him. It is inconceivable. How could Ali then serve as a valuable member in the Khilaf of Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman? Knowing of course that, that Abu Bakr is the one who angered his wife, the daughter of the Prophet of Allah. And the other one, of course, is the great lie and the slander against uh, Umar radiallahu an concerning Fatima that says that Umar, he slammed the door against Fatima when Fatima was pregnant with Muhassan. By the way, we believe that Muhassan was born in the time of the Prophet of Allah and that she had a miscarriage and the child died. And therefore they say, well, look at what Umar has just done radiallahu an. This is a lie and a slander. And not only is this again uh, putting her husband Ali in such disrepute because it's saying, I mean, couldn't he defend his wife? Would he allow something like that happen if someone killed his son? It's an accusation and it's a slander against him. May Allah make us of those who, that we would see Fatima, and we would see Khadija and Maryam and Asi. May Allah send his peace and blessings on our beloved Prophet Muhammad and his family and his companions.